see, here we go. Uh, what's going on everyone? My name is Matt Doheny, downtown Los Angeles fashion photographer, and today I am going to walk you through uh, me editing some photos. So if you guys got questions, let me know. Uh, I'm popping over here really quick, looking at my second monitor just to make sure everything's working. So if you see me looking over, that is what I am doing. So right now I'm just making sure that Twitch is working and YouTube is working because I got them running at the same time. Uh, if you guys got questions, of course, uh, that is comment what I'm oh, doing. Oh, no. So right now, now, I'm just making sure. See, double audio. I, I muted Twitch, but didn't mute um, YouTube. Okay, cool. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is switch screens. Boom, here we go. So uh, here's a shoot I did with a model. Her name was Iggy. Um, she's a great model. She did a whole bunch of runway shows, Los Angeles Fashion Week. Uh, I got her over here a few weeks ago. Shot a bunch of stuff, um, and so I'm gonna go through and kind of just find a photo I like. I'm just kind of looking over here really quick to make sure, see if the chat things are working, and it looks like they are. So that's what I'm looking at is the chat. So if anyone's got anything to say, go for it, and uh, I will answer any questions I got. So let's see. So I'm gonna go through and just try to find something I like. Now, I don't know what photo I want to edit yet. You'll see some of these have kind of been touched up a hair. I want to shoot, I want to edit something with like this prism. So, um, what was our other model? Let's see. I want to edit. What would be a fun shot to edit? Ooh, let's do. Yeah, one of these are fun. <clears throat> let's actually just edit this. So I'm going to bring this into Lightroom. I'm in Lightroom right now. I'm going to reset everything so I can walk you guys through it all. So here is the raw image, everything straight out of camera. So uh, first thing I'd like to do is add some sharpening. So I'll put that to about 100%. Come up here, add a little clarity. So I'll show you the before and after that. Ooh, spinning wheel of death. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's before. So, super easy. Um, I'm going to bring the exposure up because it was a little on the low side when I shot this. So that's too much. If you uh, can see my mouse and look at the histogram up here, it highlights and this black for shadows. So that looks pretty good to me. Let's make the highlights a little bit. A little too bright. Let's bring that down here and bring this up. <clears throat> nice. And then the blacks. Bring that down here, shadows, bring that up. So, so far that looks pretty good for Lightroom. I'm gonna mess with the white balance for a sec. So that looks pretty good for Lightroom. I'll show you the guys before and after really quick. What's the spinning wheel of death stuff? So that's before and that is after. Let's see if I bring this in the view mode. So how do I, um, whatever. Let's just bring this back in here. So I'm gonna open this up in Photoshop now. Actually, you know what, before I bring it in there, I'm going to crop it in a little bit. So I'm going to hold shift to, uh, to keep the crop the same as I bring it in. I think that looks pretty good in there. I like it nice and tight in there. I think it looks pretty cool. Cool, so uh, I'll click Command E and bring it into Photoshop. Alexa, play Spotify. Like working to music. Spotify. Alexa, next. Sorry if you got one at home and I'm setting it off. My bad. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm going to the first thing I always do in Photoshop is I copy my background layer with Command J because I like to have the original back here, just to make sure if I mess up on anything, I can go back and do it. Um, another thing I don't always do, but for other people, like when I'm showing them how to edit, I like to do a blank layer with a red brush and go through everything really quick to show you what I'm going to edit. Boom. <clears throat> so if I look at the face, definitely want to grab that. Edit that. And if you guys see anything on here you want me to edit, or if you got questions about what I'm doing, please let me know. Right now I'm just selecting things I'm going, I need to edit on this just to clean it up. Get rid of these 
hairs right here. I'll show you guys how I do all this a little bit. I wish I would have cleaned this bowl before, but I didn't. Okay. Ooh, that was weird. Okay. Let's see, don't want to do that. Get that area right there. Maybe smooth this out a little bit right there. Little guys. Right. So that looks pretty good right there from the start. Um, so I'm going to bring it all out. So just to show you, that's what I'm planning on editing. And I'm going to use this as a reference in case I forget what I'm doing. So um, what, the way I like to edit is in frequency separation, if any of you guys have heard of that. It's a great tool. If you haven't, Google it because uh, it will change your editing flow. Uh, what frequency separation does, it divides your image into two layers, a textured layer and a colored layer, and it lets you work with the textures and colors and you can create your um, adjustments on those. So it's great for like these thin lines, I'll be able just to take clone stamp on my texture layer and should get it out pretty quick. So uh, the frequency separation I actually use is a special kind called Frequency Separation 2.0 from RGG EDU. Um, I would suggest checking them out to really get the in-depth look on this if you're really curious about it. So what I'm going to do is play this action. Pretty much what it's going to do is separate these two, this image into two files. Okay, click okay. Right now it's creating the colored layer. That's what this medium is doing. It's learning everything for me. It's just another way to use you can use most people use surface blur. That's what I see mostly. Uh, this way it does it a little better because like I said earlier, like the hairs, you won't leave so much of a ghost trail. So here we go. Here's what the texture layer looks like, and here's what the colored layer looks like. Bring the bell back on. Off and on, you shouldn't see any difference. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna turn this back on to see what I want to edit. So I'm just gonna start this little region right here. So turn this off, I'm gonna hit my clone stamp tool, make sure everything's at 100 percent Current layer, because if you're not on current layer, if you're on current layer below and click sample point, you'll get this weird burn effect, and you don't want that. So I'm gonna undo, make sure you are on current layer. Uh, I like to use a hard brush when I'm working on the texture. Oh, look at me in hard brush, 50%. So what I'm going to do is click sample point, get a small brush, and then just Photoshop it out. And so what it does, you know, you could do this without the frequency separation, but it just allows you just to move texture around. And then you don't have to worry about color blotching and weird things. Like, say if I turn this off, and I come down here, and I use the clone stamp tool, and I do this, you'll see these weird lines, and they're not going to look as good, right? So I'm going to undo that, bring this back on. Boom, there we go, okay. So I'm just going to come in here and I am just selecting texture areas, the small brush, and just painting out the hair. And if anyone's curious, the Spotify playlist I've listened to is the ultimate indie playlist on Spotify. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, cool, so I can get those hairs, super easy to get rid of. Look at that, it's like no effort. And then I'm gonna come turn this back on. So I got those little regions I want. I'm gonna come down here to the Just clean this up a little bit. Cool. All right. So now I'm gonna get some of these blemishes right here. So what I'm doing is uh, option clicking on my textured layer over here, my high medium layer, and just grabbing texture and painting over it. Super easy, kind of keeps it all away. We still got some color under there, and we're gonna work on that in a minute. But you know, this is just a normal workflow. I'm doing for this bad boy. Cool. All right, let's uh, get this wrinkle out of here too. 
So that gets whatever later. Alright, here we go. Perfect. Cool. Alright, that's looking pretty good so far. Yeah, so this is all just with the cloning stamp on the textured layer. Let's get rid of all this stuff. That makes it super, super easy. And they're not worrying about like patchy, weird areas from the clone stamping tool. Oopsie. Okay, so now I come to an area where I need to match. We saw that I need to match the light. So if I take the shadow area, bring it here, so it kind of looks weird, right? So I need to match this area, bring it up there, and make it look more natural. So you know, make sure you match the areas up. <clears throat> Ooh, forget the eyes. We'll do the eyes too. So pretty much, that looks pretty solid so far. Let's make sure I got all those points in the face. Let's get this piece of hair down here. Let's work with one. Cool. All right. So you see most of the uh, the texture of the blemish is gone, but I still have the color in this area. So what I'm going to do is turn off the high layer, the textured layer, and just have the non-textured, which is the colored layer, so the low medium layer. And um, see, so you can see these blemishes right here, you know, that's what's causing the color. And what I am going to do, uh, I'll show you a couple ways to get through this. I am going to hit uh, J and make sure I am on the healing brush right here. You can toggle through that with Shift J until you get to it. Uh, make sure I'm on the correct layer. And then so we're going to look for these blemishes. So here I'm going to click a sample point, make sure we are on current layer only. I'm going to click a sample point and then use the healing brush to kind of get rid of these weird color blemishes. See how easy that is? And this is going to make it look a thousand times better. Cool. So I'm just going to get rid of these weird blotchy areas. And then we're going to, I'm going to show you another quick way to smooth everything out too, which I really like to do. Cool. All right, it's looking good. Let's uh, see before and after, just in the color layer. So I have two of each, just in case I mess up. You know, I'm really big on making sure I have backups of everything. And this uh, <clears throat> this action that RGG created actually is the same way. They like to make sure you have backups just in case you mess up. You can take from this layer and you know bring it back. So you know that's if you're wondering what's going on there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just kind of got over being sick not too long ago, so. Uh, Still got a little residge of this shit. Um, excuse my language. That's what my mom likes to say. Uh, what the fuck did you just say? After I say something bad. <laughs> Good joke. Okay, uh, so yeah, so I'm still clicking sample points. Uh, if you guys got any questions what I'm doing or if you want me to tackle a certain area, uh, throw a comment up there let me know. Um, hopefully I can see them. I'm not really sure if anyone's commenting. I'm sure no one's not because, you know, this is one of my first times really going live. I went live the other day, but, you know, no one was really there. And I don't really expect anyone to be here. But if you're watching later and you have uh, questions, feel free to comment and I will try to answer best I can. Cool. So let's just take a look. I'm just going to go back really quick and see how this looks. I'm going to turn these two top layers back on. Alexa, volume three. There we go. Perfect. Uh, sorry if it's a little loud for you. So I'm going to go before and after. Here's before and after. So now you see the difference? Looks pretty natural, you know. We really want to stay away from that. Super smooth, looks like a porcelain doll look, you know. I don't know why that got big for a long time and I am definitely in that category of doing that because, you know, like that was just the way everyone was doing it, so I thought that was standard, you know. But, you know, I've kind of grown out of that. I really want to make sure I can see texture in my image. So, you know, stay away from that. So I'm going to turn off this top of the bottom color layer. So, um, you know, the one where I just kind of smoothed everything out, just to show you the before and after. So this is just the color layer I'm toggling on and off. And you can see the blemishes. So I'll toggle off the texture as well. So that's the textured layer, I'll toggling on and off. So that's before anything. This is the color layer on, and this is the texture layer on. Boom, everything's gone. So everything's kind of looking pretty good. It's still a little... Not as smooth as I'd like it. So what I like to do is turn those off again. Here's another trick I like to do. So in order to smooth this region out, I like to take my lasso tool 
I'm just going to make a big old wide selection, making sure I'm not going too close to anything that will bleed over when I blur this. So if I go too close, actually, let me just show you. If I go into here, and then I'm going to do open my Gaussian blur, bring this down to, I'm going to hide my selection. There we go. And if I do it too much, you'll see it's going to create some hard lines, even though this is a bit extreme, but it will create hard lines like this. So I want to make sure I stay away from that. So cancel, deselect. So I'm going to pick this region right here, and this is the region I'm going to Gaussian blur. So I created a shortcut for Gaussian blur, but it's not something that's right in Photoshop as an active shortcut, so you have to make it yourself, but you can go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blurs in the panel. Um, I'm going to hide my selection for you. So as you can see, 26 pixels is way too much. You can see these harsh lines coming through. So I'm going to bring it down. All right, usually about 10 works. Nine works. Okay, cool. And I want to make sure like this is fed a little more too. So I'm going to move that to three. So um, let's do. Oopsie, deselect. Okay, so let's do another one. I'm going to click Command F, which that does. It just redoes whatever filter I did. Click Command F again. So it's very subtle, but you will start to notice after I do it like twice. It just starts to smooth everything out. Yeah, so you can really notice it there. And let's see, watch this area right here. One, two, cool, boom. I like to start small levels of Gaussian blur and build up, so that's why I do 10. So I usually do two of those. So two tens, obviously 20. Deselect, um, and then I'm gonna grab this area here. Command F again, boom. It's just kind of blurring everything. Boom, boom, let's do this area here. Cool. So it's just kind of blurring everything, making everything a little more even. Get it a little more pleasing to the eye. Let's see if this does all right. Yeah, cool, they didn't create any hard edges. Um, get that little guy there, boom. Get this little guy here, boom. So we've only done this part of the face, so let's just go and after we get this one, see what it looks like. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So let me just show you before and after of the color layer. So you see all the blending and took out all the blemishes. And let's turn on the texture layer. So there we go. Here's the before and the after. So it makes it look a lot more smooth, taking out all the weird blemish areas and it looks like just nicer. Still a lot of texture in here, which is, which is all right for me. I don't mind that, you know. Everyone's really anti Photoshop these days, so you know you want to make sure you don't go too crazy. Let's help with these wrinkles really quick. So I'm gonna click the sample point right here and just kind of tap and click. Kind of just clean these wrinkles up a little bit. I'm just taking a selection, tapping. There we go. Making sure we don't overdo it. Oopsie. One, two, five. There we go. Cool. Cool. So that's looking pretty good so far to me. Um, yo, homie, Dodger game. Got season tickets from work. No, John, John. Yeah, I'm down for Dodger game. Um, fuck, season tickets. That's sick. Um, yeah, hit me up, dude. I'm down. Let's do it. Uh, John, John's an old buddy of mine from Santa Barbara. He lives down here in Los Angeles as well. Um, thanks for tuning in, John, John. Appreciate it, brother. Um, cool. So, um, let's see. That's cool. Okay, so John John actually wins my first comment for the live stream. So uh, you get a high. I'll buy you a beer at the game. How about that? You bring me the game. I'll buy. You, I'll buy the beers. You get the tickets. Sounds like a good plan. Um, cool. So that is looking pretty solid. Let me bring this reference layer about what I wanted to clean up on the face earlier. Make sure I got everything. Uh, for the most part, I think I did over here. Let's bring this back. Turn that off. Again, before and after. So however long I've been live for, I don't really know. You know, quick little cleanup. Let's bring it to the forehead now. Cool. So I'm going to get all these areas. And I can do it the same way. I'm going to start on my um, my textured layer, which is the high medium worker. Um, click clone stamp tool, find a sample point, and boom. There we go. Just get rid of all these hairs in here easy and the more time you spend on this the better it's going to look um, so you know 
you really, really want to get like super, super clean, it's going to take you some time. Like on average, I at least spend an hour on an image for sure, an hour, sometimes an hour and a half, just depending on how much work needs to be done. Sometimes less. If you're really in a flow and you're like kind of doing a bunch of the same images, you'll get in the flow. Cool. Cool. So I'm just sampling areas again with option and clicking. Um, and hello to everyone watching. It looks like I got a couple on Twitch. Sorry, you guys are up here. It looks like I got a couple on Twitch and a couple on YouTube. Um, I'm double streaming, so hopefully that's not like taboo for the community and everyone's like, oh, you can't do both at the same time. Well, I'm gonna do them both at the same time just because, you know, uh, if I can connect both, why not? So I hope you guys enjoy. My name's Matt Doheny. I'm a Los Angeles-based photographer. I do editorial fashion. I do a lot of product photography as well. Um, you know, I really love working with models. Uh, I've been in Photoshop for ages as well. So, you know, I feel like I know my way around here and I can share it with you guys, you know, hope you guys enjoy. And I got two likes on this video. How exciting is that? That's a lot of fun, you know? Instant gratification for these little things. All right. <laughs> so, uh, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> my bronchitis is fucking killing me. Um, took me a couple days, more than a couple days, a week to get over that. <sighs> okay, so I'm gonna click back. Boom, here we are again, so. Cool, so clicking back into Photoshop. Sample clicking, boom, 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 oh, this looks good. You know, make sure you're clicking the same kind of area, because if you noticed over here, I clicked in the shadowed area and then brought some texture over here. It doesn't really look as good. So maybe let's try it over here. That's a big sample brush, you know, we don't want to do that. So, you know, I just like doing kind of, I'm tapping back and forth with my Wacom tablet. Uh, if you guys don't know what a Wacom tablet is, this is the bad boy. So I'm going around tapping, you know, do a little thing, do a little thing, do a little thing. Get it on there. All right. So uh, if you guys got questions, hey, yo, uh, what's up, Stuart? How you doing, man? Um, if you guys got questions or you want me to tackle a certain area of this image, if you're curious how I get the eyes, clean up details more, let me know, and I will get up to you. Uh, thanks for commenting, Stuart. You were my first comment on Twitch on a live stream, so... Bravo to you, thank you. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm always working on the forehead, right? Yeah. Cool, all right. So I got most of the blemishes gone. Um, I like it smooth, so I kind of look out for like little dip areas like this, which they are so minor, you'd never know, especially like if you're just posting online, you're never gonna know. But if this one's a print, you know, I wanna make sure that's gone. So uh, let's turn off my texture layer. Now I can see these things pretty well on my colored layer down here. Oh, thank you, Stuart. Appreciate it, brother. Um, so what I'm going to do on my low medium, I'm going to hit J for my healing brush. Again, it's over here. Toggle through to get healing brush. And I click a sample point and just start to smooth this area out so it looks all the same. I think this is Vampire Weekend going on in the back. Alright, I actually really like doing these live streams way more than I like having to go out and film stuff and then having to edit it up. It's just, I've never been a big fan of video editing. Um, I used to do video editing early on in my career and um, I did a lot of, I was in the surf industry early on, my younger brother's pro surfer, so I started filming him and making videos and then got into photography and then, you know, photography just ended up being the way I went. Just, I like the still image. People appreciate it more, I think. And, uh, you know, that's just what I went to school for as well. I went to Brooks Institute of Photography. And got my Bachelor's of Arts in Professional Photography. I got a lot of photographer friends out there as well. You know, we're doing our thing. Um, what's your Canon? Um, I'm using a Canon 5D Mark III, and I have a 5D Mark II as well. So uh, those are obviously full-frame Canons, and I got an assortment of lenses. Hold on one sec. Uh, this is my... Uh, main setup that I usually use. Um, it's my 24-70-2.8. This is the original. They have an updated version as well. Uh, I've got a pocket wizard on here to light the flash. I can see some flashes and stuff back there. And then the Canon 5D Mark III. Great camera body. When the 5D Mark IV came out, I um, went and bought this one because it got cheaper. So, you know, always looking for a deal. And it works just as fine. You know, whatever. You don't need the newest gear. You know, my lens is like 10 years old and things still sharp as a tack. So, I ain't mad about it. 
Um, so I'm going to come over here to this area back into Photoshop and I'm going to grab my lasso tool and we're going to do the um, Gaussian blur technique again. So I'm going to make a big selection right here. I want to smooth this out. So I'm going to, actually let me just show you where it is because not everyone has that key command. I'm going to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. I made a shortcut key which is shift command G. Um, you may be wondering why some of these are blacked out. That's because I'm working in a 16-bit image. If I convert it back to an 8-bit image, it will add all these filters. So in case you run into that problem, these things don't really bug me. I don't really need them. I never use that, 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 or that, so I don't care. Um, blur, Gaussian blur. So uh, again, I'm going to pick a radius about 10. Let's just type in 10. Click Command H to hide my selection. Uh, make sure there's no hard edges. Cool. I'm gonna bring it back. Um, be careful when you hit Command H too, because unless you have a program, it's gonna hide everything on your. You're just gonna hide the program. Uh, one second. Uh, nice. I got a five. I've got five cannons. Damn. You got five can cannons, Stuart, or five Nikon's. <laughs> like how I, I read Nikon, but then I said cannon. I'm a cannon guy. What can I say? Uh, damn, bro. Looks like you got a good amount of good amount of cameras over there. That's awesome. Um, okay, so I'm gonna hit Command F again to blur this out, so you can see it's kind of subtle, but you know we're just gonna do it to smooth all this out because we want to make this look consistent. What I'm at, what what I'm doing one part of the face, I need to do to the rest of the part of the face. Cool. So as you can see, that's just becoming a lot smoother. I might be too close to that, but let's see. Cool, so let's go before and after. Boom, boom. Look how much smoother that is. Awesome, love it, cool. Awesome, we're getting there. We're getting there, guys. Let's go uh, back and forth. Cool, you can see the difference that's making. That's really cleaning it up and not making it look too unnatural. When you make it look too unnatural, like the Facetune images. God, I, God, some of these chicks that on Instagram that use these Facetune images are just so Oh my god, it's insane. Even some of the guys too, like it's just they take it to the extreme and you can't and you can't do that when it comes to skip blurring. And like I said, I've been a victim of it too. I've used to do it to my work, but you know, growing pains. We all gotta we all gotta get to the right place. It takes a uh, practice. So I'm gonna get rid of some of this texture on here. Um, it would have been nice if I cleaned this or my assistant would remind me that day to clean it, but I'm not blaming her. It's my bad. Um, cool. Just kind of get rid of all this little texture area. So instead of doing this, let's move on to the eye, because that's a area that people are always curious about. So I'm gonna do the same thing, but you know, since we're so much closer, this colored layer down here has really bled into here. So I'm going to have to show you how I work around that. So the first I'm going to go, click my stamp, get a small brush, find an area, and then just paint. I didn't mean to right click it if you're wondering what that was. But that was right, you can, uh, command click, you can right click, change the brush size, you can flatten that, do all these weird fun stuff. So yeah, let's just brush that. So I'm going to keep it one. <laughs> Cool, so I'm just gonna go through and get rid of all these lines. And guys, this is not, this is all just straight retouching, not even color grading yet. You know, we'll get into that once I feel like we've gone far enough. You know, I'm gonna take you as far as I can in this without completely boring everyone. I know I got a couple people watching. So uh, if you guys got questions again, or you want me to tackle a certain area of this image, let me know. Hey, hey, no, no, no. I always wish I was a singer, but it didn't really work out. <laughs> know what you're good at, right? I think it would be awesome to sing. Cool, so that's looking pretty good, um, except for this little area right here. I'm going to have to clone stamp it as well. Actually, I'm going to undo that. I'm going to bring my flow down to 10%, so that means every time I go over it, it's going to do 10%. And so it's not like a hard line. So there we go. We'll fix that. So let's bring it out. That looks pretty good. Cool. Let's do the same thing on the other side. 
I like live editing, it's fun. Like I said, yesterday was my first time, or two days ago was my first time, today is my second time. Or was it? No, I think it was yesterday. I don't know, the day's blending down here. I'm in downtown Los Angeles, wild little city, but you know, it's cool stuff. Cool, all right, that's looking pretty good, guys. So that's the eyes. Um, no, not done. Cool. All right, that's, that's looking a lot better. Awesome. No. Okay. Okay. Let's get this little guy. Boom. 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 Again, I'm just click. I'm just sampling my click point, grabbing textures on my high high pass or my. Uh, High worker, the textured layer. I should really rename those for everyone. Um, so it's called the high medium worker. The reason why it's called medium is because the specific frequency separation called frequency separation 2.0 by Earth Oliver from RGG EDO uses that specific technique to create the color layer through a, a medium workflow, which is a filter of Photoshop. Uh, it's just an alternative to Gaussian blur. So this is going to be a bit of a problematic area because these, I feel like these are mostly, yeah, there's a lot in the colored area. So let's do this or grab all this texture and you're going to see some highlighted areas. So yeah, you're going to see some weird stuff back there still, like you can see this and I'll get to that in a second. But right now what I'm doing is just grabbing the texture of the background. I'm going to show you a cool little trick with the medium brush. Nice, there we go. Cool, I'm just, I'm just painting over all this texture so I can clean out this hair. You like how my head tilts when I do that? Um, and if you guys maybe like have an image you want me to edit in the future, it's always fun too. All right, cool. So that is looking about as good as I can get it from there. And what I'm gonna do is create a selection right here. So I'm gonna go and so what I'm doing is just creating that area right there. That's where I'm gonna be working. Oh, I'm going to go into here, turn off the textured layer, and what I'm going to do is go to my brush and then go to my mixing brush tool. You'll have more options. I've taken mine out because these are the only two I use. So if you have more options, you'll be like, oh, why are there only two? And I have, you have four and I have two, that's why. So I'm going to the mixing brush tool. This, this tool is awesome because it just moves pixels. Like, it just moves stuff. Awesomely, and uh, so here are my settings. Everything's pretty much in the middle. Um, I'm gonna click this button so I can click a sample point, and this is the color I want to mimic right here because I want this gray. And this is what I'm gonna do. I got a 30% flow. Everything's 40, 50, 45. So, so everything's pretty much in the middle, and I'm just going to click. I'm gonna swipe and up, swipe and up, swipe and up. And what that's doing is pushing these gray sample point I put over here, and boom! Look at that. It is gone easy. I'm going to hide my selection. It's still there. Cool. Bring it back for you guys. Boom. Hair cleaned up. Look at that. Look how quick that was and easy. See, you know, it's just the little, little things like that that I really, really, really like. Um, cool. So that looks fine. Uh, Let's see what else can I do? You know what? Oh, what did I just hit? Something freaked out. I don't know what it was. Okay, let's move on from that portion and work with some adjustment layers, shall we? So, um, right out the gate, 
what do I want to do? Hmm, I'm thinking here, because I haven't done this before. I haven't worked on this image yet, so I'm doing it with you guys. Uh, so, you know, what I usually start off with is a curve layer. So let's just bring up a curve. Bring this down. Oh, whoopsie. Sorry, I still have my selection on, so it only affected that area. So I'm going to do uh, Option, Delete. Sorry, Command, Delete, because it's going to put my uh, background color in there. Actually, no. I want to put my foreground color in there, which is white, so I can see the adjustment. Okay, cool. So uh, we're we'll moving this up and down. Let's just see what areas I want to do. So I definitely want to darken that background a little bit. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to hit Shift-Command-C. I'm going to click this gray area. And what I'm doing is I'm bringing in color range. So it's just going to select this background area. So a quick way to make a select selection. Boom, and let's just create a new curve so it adds it in there. I'll delete this old one. Boom, cool. And then let's just bring this down. Awesome, cool. So that's made that little area darker. Um, I'm going to option click on my layer mass, and I'm going to go back to a normal brush. Um, I toggle through my brushes by Shift and B, and then. Um, Make sure I click D, which will reset my palette. Like, say this is red, and I oh, oh, since I'm in the thing. Well, anyways, since I'm in the my layer mask, it's not going to show me the color. But if I click D right here, and then it's going to reset it, and I click X to toggle. So I'm going to make sure I have a black brush, and make sure I am on 100% flow. I change that by shift, and then hitting the number. And I'm just going to paint all this to make sure none of this is affected. Don't paint for too long. You only do like one, two, three. I would do three seconds of painting and lift up because in case you messed up, you don't want to have to go back and redo everything. Cool, so I'm just gonna cover her face because that's the main priority. Cool, boom. All right, let's get out of this by clicking anywhere. Cool, now we got that down. What is another thing we can do? We can maybe, Let's try something really quick. Let's go to solid color. I'm going to find something warm. That looks nice. I'm going to bring this to color. Ah, that's too orange. And let's, since I have black my foreground color, I'm going to click option delete, which will fill in with my foreground color over here. And then I'm going to get a, I'm going to click X to toggle it, get a big brush. And hit shift one to bring my flow down to 10%. And just give this a little color. Cool. Let's find something way more so. Do I even want to do that? Is that weird? It might be weird. It's a yellow. Actually, no. You know what, guys? I'm backing out. You know, things happen. It's okay. Um, backing out of that. Um, I want to color grade this. How about that? Actually, let's dodge and burn. Yeah, let's dodge and burn. So uh, what I'm going to do is I have an action here for dodging and burning, but I'm going to click it really quick. Let's play. I'm just going to show you what it did. It created a dodge layer, which is a curve adjustment that dodge means brighten and burn means darken. And so pretty much if I fill this with white, it's going to brighten everything, but I'm going to fill it back with black. And the same with the burn layer. So what I'm going to do is go into my brush, get a flow of about 3%, and brush in areas that I want to brighten up. So um, this adds a working black and white layer because it's just easier to see everything. So I know I need to I get a really soft brush. So I'm just going to add it right there. Boom. Even that out a little bit. Boom. Same with this area right here. Make it a little more even. This is going to make everything just pop. 
And I want to get this whole area up here. Boom. Boom. Make that look a little better. Boom. Try to bring the cheek up a lot. There. Boom. Cool. That looks looking good. Cool. Okay. And let's bring some of these highlights up. The hair. You know, some people do this on different layers for different parts, but in time of speed and all that good jazz, I'm just going to do this. So I'm going to shift my flow to 30% so I can get a little more in there. Boom, boom, boom. I'm just kind of painting it in there to get a little more flow. Boom. Awesome. And then let's do this same thing on the burn layer. So. I'm going to go back to 10% of my flow. I hit, did that by shift 1. And then I'm just going to darken areas right here. Darken areas I don't want to just focus on. Bring that. Let's get a little contrast. Perfect. So let's just see what that looks like before and after. Before. See, it just makes it pop a little more. Dr. Burns fun. Let's see what that looks like without the color. Before and after. Boom. It just makes it pop. It makes it just more like, I don't know, better. What's the word I'm looking for? It just makes it pop more. I just love that. Yeah, this is before and after. And it makes it a little easier. We smoothed it all out, brought that out, got rid of that area. You know, like, you know, we're just finding ways to make this image pop a little more. You know what? That looks like a little much now that I'm looking at it with the color. So what I can do is go with my brush, I'm going to go to black, and I only want to get rid of like 50% of this, or 40%, so I'm going to click just 4, so I'll change my opacity to 4, and then it's going to go like this, boom, boom, shakalaka, awesome, cool, that looks good for that, dodging and burning, complete. Let's uh, let's get the eye going, shall we? Uh, so I'm going to do a curve layer, I'm going to type in eye. I did that by Shift Command M, which is also is another custom shortcut, but you can find a curve down here in the adjustment layer and click on curve. Let's zoom in, shall we? Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna bring that up. I like to go to the extreme, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click D to reset. Sorry, you guys can't see where I'm pointing when I'm going like this. I'm gonna click D to reset my color palette over here, um, and then Fill it with the background color, which is black, which is Command D. And then I'm going to click B for brush. And I'm going to change my opacity back to 100 by just clicking 0. Um, and then I'm going to paint it in. Holy shit, just like that. There we go. Boom. Cool. So that's obviously way too much. Let's see. Oh. So I'm just going to bring this down to there. Just give it a little pop. You guys can see the before and after. Much still. You know, so it's all about fine tuning. There we go. So let's do the before and after of everything. Before and after. Before and after. So you know what? I want to darken this area of the bulb more. So um, I'm going to do a, I'll open another curve adjustment. Let's see, undo. I'm going to call it a bulb. And I'm going to mess with my curve and just see where I like it a little bit. Oh, that looks way better. And it's going to look a lot cleaner, I think. So since my background color over here is black, again, I'm going to control delete. Hit V for brush. And I'm going to click to shift one to make a flow of 10% so every time I go over it's going to be 10% and I'm just going to do swipes. I'm just going to do swipes, ready? One swipe, two swipe, three swipe, four. Okay, cool, nice. There we go, nice. That looks so much better. Nice. Um, and I want to change the uh, blend mode, which is this over here, to luminosity, so I'm not affecting the color. So if I go back, it's going to affect the color a little bit. Oh, actually, I'm not even on the face yet. So, But I'm just going to do, uh, yeah, I'm going to do luminosity. So 
just so I'm not affecting the color if I get her. I'm just going to darken her a little bit down here just to make her pop a little more over there. So if I just do color, I'll just nail the, um, let's do normal, see what that looks like. Okay, and let's go to velocity, see what that looks like. Velocity. You know what? Normal looks better. Normal for the win. Okay, that's fine with me. Let's just pretend like this thing makes it darker, but it doesn't. That's way too much, actually. So I'm going to click X so I get black in my foreground layer and work on my layer mask and swipe on that just to bring this back a little bit. Alexa, play Guns N' Roses on Spotify. Give me something. Cool. Look at that. Okay, so just that difference. That just makes it pop a little more. It makes it look more like a dope glass. Dope bulb. Yeah, much better. I think it's much better. Um, what are your guys' thoughts? If you got any questions, let me know. Uh, let's make sure we got everything. Oh, see, this is why I should do this more. My reference layer, in case I forget things. So uh, these things right here. Let's work on those really quick. So I'm gonna go back to my frequency separation and turn that off. And then I'm uh, gonna click stamp. Um, and I'm changing the size by moving the cursor left and right and holding control option. That will change the size of your brush really quick. And then if you move up, it makes it softer. And if you move down, it makes it harder. So up, down, left, right. And then you can find somewhere in the middle that works for you. So uh, for texture, like I said, I like to use like a medium brush. That works good with it. Click a sample point right here. Cool. So getting ready of that texture. Um, I'm going to have to go on the layer below and fix that as well. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to go to the low layer. Let's turn off the texture layer and um, I'm going to make a selection right here really quick. Oopsie. Um, I'm just going to actually let's click W for quick select. Boom. Awesome. I'm going to invert this. So W is the quick select tool or the magic wand, or as my old teacher likes to call it, the tragic wand because it's tragic at making a selection. But you know, they actually updated it a long time. That was like 10 years ago. So uh, I can't mess this up. So I'm going to click brush and I'm going to toggle through till I get some mixer brush. I got these guys selected. I can click this black sample point. Uh, it's not black up here because obviously it's an adjustment layer and I'm just going to brush it in. See how that just disappears magically? Look how nice it is. Awesome. Nice. Perfect. And it's gone. I love it. Let's see if I can do this anywhere else. And I'm just kind of pushing pixels around with this mixer brush. Um, looks good. So let's deselect that. Make sure everything looks good. Bring back our texture layer. That looks great. Let's see, see, just, just, just fix that whole region right there. Nice. Before and after. So we're getting there, guys. We're, we're working on it. We're working on it. Um. <clears throat> now that I'm looking at it, the dodge to me looks a little high, so I'm gonna go back here. Click the dodge layer and bring this down just a bit. There we go. It's a little better. There we go. And the left eye looks way too much. So I'm gonna go to the eye and I'll hit my brush again, toggle back to my normal brush, and I hit 30%, make sure my flow is 100, and just swipe over this once. Well, I can just go over as many times as I want, as long as I don't lift up, because I'm on opacity. The difference between opacity and flow is like if you do have a 10% flow and you go over it every time is 10%. With opacity, it's just you swipe over, you can go over as many times, it's just gonna bring it down 30%. And it's not gonna keep going. Cool. Oh let's get rid of that old guy right there. So you know, I'm gonna go, you're gonna be going back and forth. Let's reset everything. So let's go back to our texture layer, go back to my clone stamp tool, get this little guy right there, boom, get rid of that. Just 
The skin is looking great. I'm loving that. Got texture for days. Let's get rid of this guy right here. Where did we go? Oopsie. Yeah, I'm just going through and finding texture I don't like. Where do we go now? Um, let's get rid of this head right here. Let's get rid of that. You know, it's just so easy to work on a textured layer like that, you know, and instead of having to like do it on a normal layer and like, you know, some people are not great, Paul's have tool, um, you know, if I'm making this look easy, I'm sorry. Um, it does take some skill, you know, practice makes perfect. Whoa, what did I do there? So I'm going to bring that back. See what happened when I accidentally drag it along? Um, so this is not a perfect method, you know, you can still mess up. But you know, find your areas. It's really getting in here. I'm just having fun with this right now. I'm having fun doing this live too. I'm actually really enjoying this. This is fun. Probably talking to myself, which is totally fine. But uh, I'm into it. I talk to myself anyways. <laughs> now I just have an excuse. Oh no, I'm going live. I'm not. I'm not crazy. I'm not talking to myself. I'm just editing. Yeah, cool. So I'm just fixing this hair down here. If you guys can see that, if you can. Man, if I really wanted to go crazy on this image, I could fix all this hair in here, get rid of all these strays. I don't know if I want to do that. I like these guys. I don't know if I want to do that as I'm doing it, but you know what? Let's just see what happens. Let's do a couple. So yeah, you can use frequency separation because it's just taking the texture. You're not going to really tell too much. Grabbing these texture layers, making them even. Just make them roll in. I'm not gonna go that far, I don't think. I wish our hair was a little not as messy. Okay. Get rid of this guy. What else can we find to get rid of? Look at all this texture everywhere. It just makes it so easy to get rid of on frequency separation. Into your eyes. Cool. All right. It's looking good, guys. I'm liking it. So let's go back to color grading, shall we? So again, before and after. Ooh, yeah, I'm just kind of checking on that. I just want to maybe not make it as dark. Maybe I want to make it super dark. Yeah, let's make it black. Fuck it. Yeah. Fuck you, bruh. Okay. This image I think needs a little contrast. I don't put the contrast layer in Dodge and Burn things. So, you know, there is a built in contrast in Photoshop in curves. You can click presets, medium contrast, strong contrast. Increase contrast. So these are all pretty freaking intense. I don't like it. So I can change one mode of luminosity and then click A for the path selection tool. It's just this tool really doesn't do much unless you're in path. And then I'm going to click uh, a number. What's going to do is change opacity. Cool. So 30% looks good. Cool, still in it. Okay, let's play around with the gradient map. So gradient map's fun because you can go in here and just pick random ass colors. Like that one was cool. Where did it go? Like that one was cool. Let's change the blend mode. So what I'm gonna do is toggle through the blend modes. I love doing this. So I click A back to my pointer tool over here. I'm gonna hold shift and plus and minus. And what it's going to do, as long as I'm on this layer, it's going to toggle between these blend modes. So I just go through and see which one works the best. It's summertime. Uh, 
Like, ooh, that one's kind of cool. So once I find something I like, I'm going to make sure I'm on A, and then I'm just going to click 1. Again, we're just going to bring up the percentage of it. So uh, let's say 30%. I'm going to keep it at 30% and keep toggling, see if I find something better I like. That one's kind of cool. So maybe they'll just bring that to 10%. This makes it pop a little bit. Um, but I don't like it. So I'm going to delete that bad boy. Um, I use this thing called the Infinite Color Panel, which is fun. Um, it's for color grading. I think it was like a hundred bucks, maybe not even that. Maybe it was fifty bucks. But uh, it's a great tool. It creates color grades for you and it randomizes it for you. So, like, say, like, oh, gradient map, right? I'm gonna click this Shift button and just gonna automatically do what I did for me. But you know, they automatically just go to color in fifteen percent most of the time. But you know, I'm just gonna keep clicking it because it's gonna randomize it in there. You know, and I'm going to find something that looks cool. Ooh, yeah. Time. Oh, no. And what I'm doing is just kind of refining the maths because I can kind of see, like, it's wonking out over there. So, um... I go back to my brush, I go back to my bulb layer. That's why we layer it because you know, or name it because you know, if you don't name it, it's going to get quite messy trying to find everything. Or maybe I just want to make it all black. There we go. Yeah. Let's do the same thing over here. Cool. Perfect. So that's bulb and background. Oh, this got moody. Look how fun this is getting. Nice. Color is looking a little wonky now because this gradient map thing. Um, maybe I'll change this blue a little bit. So I just open the gradient map editor and let's fix this color. Yeah, there we go. That's even better. So you see it before. And then after. Like that. Super subtle, but it works for me. Um, let's click another one of these things. Uh, let's do the color lookup. So the color lookup table, if you guys don't know what that is, is um, you're pretty much taking a color checker panel, the, the multiple color thing you see, and it is giving you presets for like film presets. Uh, they use it a lot for Photoshop, and I don't even think I know it that well. Now that I'm here myself, if you, don't, if you can't explain something simply, you don't know well enough. So I'm gonna have to learn a little bit more on the color lookup table. But pretty much, it's just giving you color palettes of certain film processing, I think is mostly what it is. But I'm gonna um, click it, see how it, it messes with everything. Ooh, ooh, that's moody. Love that. Really brought down my highlights. You can find the color panel by opening up your curve adjustments layer and look the color lookup table, and it's gonna bring up this thing, and you're gonna, that's what a LUT is. And then you know, you can kind of look at these bad boys, say like, we're gonna do drop blues 3D, right? That's kind of freaking awesome. I'm not mad at that at all. Um, oh, actually, that looks amazing like that. That makes it really edgy. I'm going to click A back to my uh, pointer tool and click 1. To maybe just toggle through, see what I like. So i got two color lookup tables going on right here, which is kind of a lot. I'm going to try this one at 80%. No, not too much. 10%. 20%. Okay, that looks good there. And then this one at... 40, 50, 60. Okay, yeah, so pretty much what it's doing is it's really bringing those blacks up to a, uh, a more faded level. I'm liking it, um, except I just want the blacks moved down more a little bit. So I'm going to open my curve adjustments later. You can see on this histogram what it did. So I'm just gonna bring it relax back down. There we go. That really just took out a lot of the color. So let's see what all this looks like before and after. 
That's, so that's my color grading on there. And uh, I think I'm happy with that for the most part. I do want to bring, let's see if I can bring my dodge and burn up more. No, I'm gonna have to do this on a brand new layer because it, <clears throat> I did Apache before. Um, so I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna go above all these things because you know, where you place it makes a difference. So I'm gonna do this on uh, brightness, there we go. And I'm just gonna play with the curve really quick, see what it does. No, what are you doing? Come on, meow. There we go, back to one point. Cool, so that's way too much for this image. I'm gonna do this technique where I double click and open layer styles and then you can uh, control the amount of the underlying layer, like what you want to show through. So, you know, I don't, I only want the highlights to show through. So I'm gonna spread this open. There we go. I'm gonna bring it down here. Oh, that's a fun. There we go. That's before and after, guys. I think, I think that's where I like it. Actually, I want to get rid of this guy right there. So back to my high frequency layer stamp. Find a sample point, and it don't. Mm, does that look too much? I think that looks too much, actually. God, this is the struggle of this. It's just going back and forth. Oh, I made it look too weird. Okay, so I'm gonna actually just get rid of that brightness right altogether. I think I like it like that. Yeah, maybe this bulb layer is still too much. So I'm gonna come back to the bulb. I'm gonna bring this curve back a little bit like that. There we go. I don't think it's so heavy. Alright, I think that's, that's looking good, guys. I'm liking that. You know what, this little patch right there is bugging me, so I'm going to come back in here. I'll do that last one. Uh, bring my brush smaller. I'm gonna bring it in here more because you know you gotta sample the same uh, kind of brightness level. Like if you bring that over here, it's just gonna look way weird. If you bring this over here, it's different, right? You may like it. Maybe you like that texture over there. I don't know. Just you know, make sure you bring this same texture over. There. Checking on you guys is what I'm looking over at. I have a monitor. A dual monitor. Which I feel like a lot of people do. Too. So right now I'm toggling the eye off and on, just seeing if I still like it. That up. Why is it going so slow? Come on, meow. Help me out. There we go. All right, come on. There we go. And let's uh, talk a bit with my mother and see what that does. There we go. Color dodge. That looks more like it. 
And I'm going to bring the opacity of that down to 60%. There we go. Just makes it pop. There we go. Perfect. Cool. That's looking good. I'm liking that. Um, dodge and burn. Toggle that on and off. I'm going to tone this down a little bit. I'm going to bring the blacks back up there. You know, it's all about tweaking. It's like mixing a song. The paradise in the grass is green, the girls are pretty. Oh, won't you please take me home? You know, I think that may be too flat. Did that look too flat? No, not there. Maybe the gradient mask one. No. Something's bugging me. I don't know what it is yet. I have to open this curve. Maybe I will bring the highlights up on this. There we go. Not make it as flat. There we go. So just tweaking around. Take me down to the paradise city where the grass is green and the girls are pretty. Won't you please take me home? All right, um, guys, I think I am about done. Um, I'm liking it right now. Maybe I want to change these lips. <laughs> I'm done. No. Psych. Uh, let's just make a selection, a very rough selection, see if I even want to change this or not. Okay. I'm going to open a hue saturation panel, and let me just saturate this for a minute. Just make it a little redder. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so I'm going to click my brush tool and soften this up, make a really soft brush. Just make sure my black's on the foreground because I want to hide the edges of this. Down to the paradise city where the grass is green and the girls are pretty. Won't you please take me home? So undo. I'm going to do that at a flow of 50%. I still want that to have a little color in there. Okay, boom. All right, back to 100, click zero. So that's still a little much. I'm going to bring it down. I mean, let's go to the reds. Maybe we shift that under. There we go. I think that looks great. Four and a half. Perfect. Subtle look. To the paradise city, the grass is green and the girls are pretty. You know what? I want to go back to the burn layer. Click X and then uh, make my brush big and kind of darken it a little bit. So, um, I think I'm liking this. I'm going to finish it up by Shift Option Command E, which is sample, sample, staple visible. I'm going to filter, sharpen, unsharpen mask, and I'm going to sharpen this bad boy. I'm going to click OK. And now we don't need to sharpen everything, so I'm going to option click the layer mask down here. See, make sure I'm on the layer. And it's going to, when I option click it, it's going to fill it with black. I'm going to go back to my brush, make sure everything is 100%, flow opacity it is. And I'm just going to paint in the eyes the brows, mouth, I think that's good enough for the sharpening, yeah, just make, you know, that's what we want to pop, and then maybe I'll add some texture, like some grain, so I'm going to do that in Photoshop by creating a new layer, soft light, fill with 50% gray, and then I can go to filter, noise, add noise, and so what it's going to do is add noise on this texture, on the on this layer. So obviously if I go to like 60, it's going to be a lot of noise. That looks good. Um, you know, I want to bring this down a little bit over there, I think. So I'm going to go back to my burn layer, click my brush. And it's not going to work since I have a stamp visible. So I'm just going to bring another layer up here. And I'm just going to see what area I want to bring down. Okay. And I'm going to fill that with black. Go back to my brush. Big brush. 
There we go. Cool. Excuse me. All right. I was just curious what it would look like if I darkened this oil over here. No. Okay. So, anyways, guys, I think that is it. Um, here is our final image. I'm going to show you the before and after. Before, after. And uh, that is my editing process, guys. Um, I hope everyone really enjoyed this. Um, if you're on YouTube, you know, hit the subscribe button. I'm going to be doing this frequently, you know, because I am editing all the time, so I might as well just do it live. Um, and if you're on Twitch, um, I don't know how it works on Twitch. I just started using that. So uh, fill me in. Maybe you guys can teach me a thing or two. Uh, I'm really looking forward to doing this more. I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, again, my name is Matt Tokini, and I'll catch you guys later.